Hello, my name is Benjamin Berner. Today, we're going to steam bend kiln dried wood. Now in my last video, I attempted this and it didn't go so well. A lot of people say that kiln dried wood can't be bent at all. Well, it does seem true that it's very difficult. I have had some success after adjusting several things. I couldn't find any wood that wasn't kiln dried. So I really just had to work with what I had and keep trying different things. It seems to be working. Step one, we've got some plastic sheeting here. I'm gonna cut a strip out of this so that I can wrap it around the piece of wood. All right, I've got a strip of my two mil plastic sheeting. This is just like a drop cloth that I got at Home Depot. I'm gonna go ahead and get my piece of wood and wrap it in this. So I made the decision to soak the wood that I'm steam bending. And I know about Ligden and the theories about why soaking doesn't help and why you can't bend kiln dried wood. But like I said, I couldn't really find anything else. And rather than just give up, I figured I might as well try it. I don't know if it's the soaking, but something I'm doing is allowing me to successfully bend this wood. I made this soaking tub just out of some scraps, two by fours, things like that, and then lined it with the same plastic that I'm using to steam bend the wood. And that seems to work really well. I'm using hickory here, uh, a fairly straight grained piece of hickory. Hickory seems to bend better than most of the types of wood that I've tried. This has been soaking for three or four days now. And even with that time, the water's only really penetrated just a small amount into this wood. That's okay though, because the surface of the wood is what experiences the most stress when you're bending it. And that's the first part to get soaked in the water. So with that, let's go ahead and bend this guy. Okay, here's my piece of hickory. Let's go ahead and wrap it in plastic. <clears throat> This is just a regular household stapler I had laying around. Just gonna wrap it like this. Fold this over several times. All right, so here's my 1500 watt drywall steamer, which is working really well at producing a lot of steam. Uh, I cut the attachment off here. I'm just gonna put this in here and wrap it in duct tape. Okay, we're ready to go. I made a funnel out of a milk carton. Always nice to reuse things. And I have some hot water that I've been boiling on the stove. I find that if I pour boiling water in here, it starts the process up a lot faster. Otherwise, this thing takes quite a while to heat up. It goes without saying at this point that there's more than a little bit of risk of burning the crap out of yourself. Hopefully that goes without saying. It's certainly safer to add cold water or just warm water instead of really hot water. As always, you kind of have to evaluate your own risk tolerance. I'm certainly not a safety expert. All right, so went ahead and plugged that in and you can hear it already starting to boil which is great it's producing steam now the next thing that i've found in steam bending really dry or kiln dried wood is that it takes a lot more steam time so the recommendation i found online was one hour per inch of thickness and with kiln dried wood i've been doubling, tripling, even quadrupling that without any problems. So it seems like you can steam it for three, four hours 
uh, and not have any problem. And I found that that works better. I get better results as I extend the steam bending time. So it's in here now, it's starting to steam, um, and we'll just leave it here for, for quite a few hours. Now the wallpaper steamer here holds, I think a little over a gallon. So I will have to check the level of the water and refill it several times throughout this process. Uh, each time I refill it, I boil the water on the stove to refill it. If I don't do that, then it cools everything off and takes, you know, 15, 20 minutes to reheat. And during that time, it's not getting steamed. So I always refill it with boiling water. As noted before, there are obvious safety risks with that. I'm just a dude trying this in his garage, so don't, don't yell at me if you're dumb and you burn yourself. So it's been steaming for a good long time, and you can tell it's kind of, the bag is inflating with steam a little bit. Using an infrared thermometer, I can just check the temperatures right here where I'm going to bend it, and I find that they're all right around 215 in Fahrenheit. So that's great. Now I think the most important thing when bending wood is the compression straps that I built. That seems to have made the biggest difference because I went through several iterations of this. These are water heater straps that I bought at a hardware store. And I have two of them. You have to compress the outside bend. So this strap right here wraps around and compresses the outside of this bend. And this strap right here wraps around and compresses the outside of this bend like this. And they both grab the ends of the board to compress it like that. Now I've built these guys right here and these just kind of notch onto the end of the board and squeeze it on on both ends. Okay, so the straps are on. Hopefully you can kind of see how they work. As I bend this around here, this strap is gonna place compression on this outside edge as it bends to keep it from tearing apart. And the same thing is happening over on this side. Now I wanna get as much compression on here as I can without actually breaking these straps or bending them or something like that which has proved to be pretty easy to do actually. Um, so finding that balance is pretty critical. I find it works well just to kind of tighten this up a bit, get it a little snug. As I bend it around, of course, it will get tighter and tighter, or rather it will compress the wood more. Now I have a couple clamps handy. With this just roughly one inch square piece. I haven't actually had to clamp it down to get the bend. I just slide this in place and lock it, but I do all the bending just by pulling it. One of the nice things about plastic is you can kind of maintain the steam heat the entire time you're bending it. Just checking to make sure that looks good. I don't think we have any, any breaks or anything. Just gonna let this sit here, let it slowly cool off. I'm actually gonna keep it in the bag. Um, I don't want it to dry up and cool off too quickly. Uh, and then in an hour or so, I can come back and take most of this stuff off. By then, it should be pretty cool. All right, so it's had plenty of time to cool. Nice and cool there. We're gonna, we can go ahead and take it out of the plastic and see how we did. As you can see, it's a pretty extreme bend. 
and uh, it looks pretty good. There's just a little bit of a crack here, um, a little bit of a crack here on the outside of both places, but they're not deep at all. I don't think they're going to affect the structure of it in any way, but yeah, it still seems to bend pretty well. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you like this, it'd mean a lot to me if you commented on it, liked it, subscribed. I really appreciate all of those things. It motivates me to do more of these things. Also stay tuned because I am really committed to building this crib for my kid. And I will hopefully find the motivation to post more videos. The next step is to start putting all of these pieces together. So you can start seeing how they'll, they'll fit into a crib. Thanks again, guys. Keep building.